What's up everyone, it's Jake here and welcome back to Almost Vintage Style. Today we are back with another boot review and today I'm talking about a pair of boots that aren't really talked about that often in our kind of heritage menswear boot world kind of thing. Um, and I'll probably maybe talk about why a little bit. So these are the Helm Hollis boots in teak. So, um, this, I've actually, the interesting thing is Helm's been around a, for at least a decade, I'm pretty sure, and I actually did hear about them and see their boots before I even started buying boots myself. Uh, kind of when I was starting to research boots and start to get into, you know, good boots when I was switching basically from like Vans, essentially, and um, Helm was a, a brand I, I ran into, I probably saw like, you know, advertising or whatever and I was interested in them because I actually thought they looked really cool um, the thing that kind of sets them apart in a way is well two things one they you well three things actually one they make almost all of their boots as far as I know in Brazil um, they also use what I believe is Brazilian leather from a Brazilian tannery and they also use Blake rapid stitch construction instead of Goodyear welting and they have this probably the thing you noticed first this white midsole thing here that identifies pretty much all of their boots that is kind of their signature look thing um, so I'm going to go over all that and what I think about these boots so the first thing is these are $295 um, and I will talk about what I think about the price later and they are made in Brazil, they are using Brazilian leather, and they're made on, you know, Blake Rapid Stitch construction. And it's a uh, decent enough leather, honestly. Uh, the color I really like, it's teak, is what they call it. It's kind of like their sort of cognac, you know, Battle Assy cognac color, or equivalent, at least in my opinion. This is, you know... Okay, obviously this is not a fair comparison here. These are my white cloud boots, but this is Battle Cognac is a uh, leather other makers use, and there are actually some similarities in that. Um, you know, kind of similar colors. This one starts off a little darker, and this, these have been worn for many, many years. And they also both crease pretty easily. They're both very creasy, crease-prone leathers. Now I generally like that, so I don't actually have a problem with that. I'm not seeing like any serious loose grain on these. Um, so the leather is actually pretty nice, and it is like some sort of pull-up leather, I think, because, you know, I've been, I've actually worn these like seven times, and I've scuffed them a few times, and you can actually see the pull-up effect, which is kind of cool, and it's pretty decent. It's local to where they're making the boots, so I think that's actually a good move. I don't have a problem with that, and it's a nice leather um, for the price point. Uh, construction is actually quite good. This is probably the part that impressed me the most about these boots um, in terms of like quality control and everything. Um, the Blake stitching is clean. The SPI, stitches per inch, is very low, but it is very well executed, honestly. And I, yes, I'm somebody who loves, you know, very, very dense stitching. I think it's very pretty. I like that. Um, but if you're going to do you know, lower SPI and it still looks nice and you do it well, then that's fine. Like, especially again, at this price point, this is 295 is like a lower price point for good quality boots. So I think that's perfectly fine. Um, yeah, it's very straight. Like this is like, this is nicer than most of the whites that I've seen. And yes, I know the whites are doing it by hand. That's not an excuse. These are done by hand and they're perfect. Okay, you know there I see I got there's some Indonesian and Chinese boots down here that are stitched by hand and they're perfect. So that White's excuse of or White's fans excuse of it's done by hand. That's why it's messy. BS. Okay, um, the upper stitching also very nice. Honestly, it is pretty dense and it's pretty neat. Um, can't probably you probably can't see everything here, but overall it's pretty good. And even the area where the, you know, upper quarter meets the vamp here on both boots is overall pretty good. It's not perfect. There are some like, you know, 
not like loose stitches like the stitching is all fine there um, it's just that like there's loose threads that they could have burned off a little better but honestly for how much stitching is going on in this area hopefully you can see for how much stitching is going on there it's actually pretty good especially at this price point and especially considering that I've never really had Brazilian boots before I didn't really know what to expect in terms of the quality there uh, the toe cap I'm assuming it's not a real toe cap, which is perfectly fine. These are not marketed to be work boots, okay? Um, the stitching on that is really good. Like, it's very straight. Straighter than boots I've handled that are more expensive, okay? So, uh, also the edge finishing overall, very good. It's very nice. Uh, the clicking is solid. I really don't see any issues there. Everything is matching nicely. Um, even the cutting is nice like there's not a bunch of like loose like little you know in a lot of boots when you see here where they cut the leather it's just kind of fraying like little grains or like rough out pieces of leather right I don't even know exactly the right term but you, you know what I'm talking about um, this doesn't have that it's neat so on all those fronts it's it's really quite good honestly so I'm impressed with all of that the laces seem decent enough um, I'm surprised by that and and the tongue is even half gusseted which I really like I personally cannot stand when brands like try to save money by not gusseting the tongue because I always end up having issues with like the tongue sliding over or whatever or it's like less comfortable and it is you know less water resistant now obviously this is not a full gusset because you know, up here it's not gusseted, but it's gusseted down to like the third eyelet. I mean, that's good enough to at least keep it in place, which is superior to what, what a lot of brands do. I'm, I like that, honestly. I, I'm not saying it's an objective quality thing, but it's something I personally prefer, right? Obviously, there's certain things different reviewers get hung up on, right? And that's something I get hung up on. Uh, pull tab, which I also like too, does make it easier to get on and off. I don't know why more boot brands don't. I mean, I guess people don't like how they look, but I actually do like this. Um, so yeah, I also like the outsole they use. It's their own branded kind of mini lug outsole, which again, I think is a good move to do. Um, you know, if you're trying to make a lower price boot and uh, you want to save a little bit of money, but uh, still provide something decent, then like doing your own, got kind of little rocks in there. Um, if you want to make like your own little mini lug sole, that's a good move. And I think this is a great choice overall uh, the one issue is that it's pretty thin so you might need to replace it sooner than other outsoles but I don't personally have really an issue with this because clearly these are not marketed as like seriously hardcore boots they're not supposed to be and that's fine they're made with Blake construction they have this weird little white line among on it it they're city boots, right? These are city boots. And I'm perfectly fine with city boots being city boots if they're not pretending to be something they're not. And these aren't, right? Um, and in fairness, their marketing, like, I have some issues with, like, their website and their marketing. We'll get to that in a little bit. But at least on the positive side, they're not, like, trying to pretend to be, like, oh, we're super rugged and tough and everything, right? They're not, they're not doing that. Like, yes, here, we make nice boots for the price, you know? So I'm cool with that. Uh, and I do think this is a good choice because it is going to be pretty grippy. And I've found it to be pretty grippy. I have worn these in a little bit of rain. And this sole was good. Um, it's basically kind of like the, to me, it think, makes me think of the Vibram 430 a little bit. Um, and yes, so it's not going to last forever. It will wear down eventually. But, you know, it's better than day night, in my opinion. I hate day night. It's not grippy at all. This is much grippier than that. And um, it's not super obtrusive. It doesn't make them look like combat boots, you know. So it's a good balance. So I like that. I think that's very good. Good choice. Um, in terms of fit and comfort, these run true to size. So they're not boot sizing. These are like closer to sneaker sizing. I'm at a 10.5D on a Brannock. I went with a 10.5D and they fit great, actually. I have to admit, they fit me very nicely. They had basically zero break in. Um, I, they are fully lined. Uh, here's where I kind of say, to mention a weird thing about the website, they say fully lined for a custom fit. That's misleading 
lining a boot has basically nothing to do with how they fit overall. I mean, I guess technically, yes, it takes up more room, but you can adjust that with how thick your leather is, etc. So that's misleading to people. That teaches people the wrong thing about boots, honestly, because lining does not do that. Now you can say lined for comfort, that's fine, but saying lined for a custom fit is, that's misleading, I don't like that. Uh, but it is fully lined, so some people might really like that. I don't ever really personally care about that. I That's, you know, one of the things I don't get hung up on. Uh, but, you know, for the price point, I guess that's nice. Um, and the thing that some people might like that I certainly don't is that these are, these use a lot of synthetic materials. And you could probably guess that based off of the white, you know, midsole thing that they have. I personally don't love that. It makes the boots, you know, a bit sweatier. Um, and I definitely experienced that with the Rhodes boots that I reviewed. And I felt that when I, when I had Thursdays and I was trying those out, and I also with the Mark Alberts that I had, Rip Mark Albert boots. Um, not Mark Albert, he's still around, but Rip his brand. Um, so I never liked that. These have the same issue, but on the plus side, um, there is an airplane outside being annoying, but also I think this works a little better for this brand than with other brands because they went with the Blake stitching. And so these are like, these are very flexible, like really flexible. And that's kind of what they're going for. They're very comfortable and flexible, especially if you're used to sneakers. So I do think that if you're somebody who is new to boots and you're looking for your first pair of boots and you want something comfortable, like you're used to with spongy, squishy sneakers, these are definitely up there in terms of a very good choice. And that's where I think like the white thing is kind of the white little, you know, line midsole thing is kind of a cool idea because it does make them look like, I'm pretty sure these guys are from Austin and I've never seen a pair of boots that looks more like it belongs in Austin, Texas than these. Like these are very hipstery looking and you know, hipster was like a terrible thing 10 years ago and nowadays it's just like, whatever, like nobody's really a hipster anymore because it's just not really a thing anymore. But like, yeah, like, I just feel like these belong on like a dude with a man bun who's a barista at like some like really nice Austin cafe, right? Um, and that's a good or a bad thing, uh, depending on who you are. But like, I feel like that's kind of their audience, like somebody like that who wants to get a pair of boots that are actually decent, right? And these definitely are. I kind of like the white midsole thing, but it's not gonna be for everybody. It definitely makes them look more like a city boot. But again, that's not a bad thing if that's what you're into. Um, I think that's perfectly fine. Like the quality overall that I've experienced so far is fine. Like it's actually pretty good for what they are. The comfort is fine. They're, they don't have much arch support. They're, they're very flat feeling. And that could be a bad thing depending on who you are. That would be my biggest complaint about the comfort or fit. Like I'm a 10 D and these feel fine. Like they're not too big anywhere. They're not too loose anywhere. I have a very like normal foot and these are a very normal fitting boot and they're very easy to wear. I had no issues in any way, like in terms of breaking. There was nothing, it wasn't too like tight here. The, the, it obviously started flexing very easily. Uh, the, they're squishy and honestly, they went so hard on the synthetic materials like these insoles are so squishy and foamy and the midsole is 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 synthetic and then obviously there's this like outsole which is still pretty soft too because it's got like the lugs and everything this is like the best at least for me this is the best use of synthetic materials i've ever experienced i still vastly prefer real leather Absolutely. Like overall, I prefer real leather, but this is the first time I personally have experienced it like a boot where I can see the argument for synthetic materials on the insole and the midsole and everything. And I think it's because they just went all in on synthetics, like all in. And that kind of works actually. At the end of the day, these didn't hurt every other boot i've worn that has synthetic like a combination of synthetic and 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 like you know real leather and all that stuff my feet kind of hurt at the end of the day because i'm on my feet a lot like my work days are like 10 hours not including driving 
Um, and these feel better. Um, so I'm impressed, like in terms of comfort and wearability, these are better. Now, again, the biggest issue like over time would be for me, the lack of our support, but that's not a problem for everybody. So that's kind of subjective. I would argue the thing is like they, I can wear these all day and I'm actually fine with that. And I don't dread wearing these. Like I would dread wearing other boots that I had to review because they were so uncomfortable at the, by the end of the day. These for me were not. Now I'm not saying that's going to be the case for you. Other people who are used to, you know, if you're used to your PNW boots or whatever, or you're used to your Flame Panthers or whatever, you might not have the same experience. But then again, if you're buying those boots, you're probably not looking at these. If you are, I mean, they're much lower price and they're actually pretty fine. So I wouldn't really not recommend them uh, if you want. If you're looking for a specific thing, like use case for these, um, but like. If like money, no object, would I recommend these over Thursdays? Absolutely. Like I, my experience with these was much nicer than with Thursdays. The problem comes in with the price because these are 295 and Thursdays are still 199. And that's a lot of money. And the people that are looking at boots like this are going to be more price sensitive than people who are looking at all the other stuff behind me right here, you know? Um, you don't even have to go a hundred dollars up and you're looking at like Grant Stone, which I would definitely, okay, I am biased there, obviously. Uh, but I would, even if I wasn't, I'm pretty sure most boot, any boot nerd is going to recommend that. Uh, or, you know, other stuff like there's some of the, um, what Parkhurst, right? Parkhurst is going to be not that much more money than this. So, and that's definitely more of like a boot nerdy boot. Um, and so, and I'm not biased towards Parkhurst and I would still say if I'm like, if uh, somebody who's like into serious boots or looking to get into real, like serious boots, these are real boots, but like if you're trying to get into, if you're looking to get into boots as a whole thing, as a hobby, as an, as an interest, as like part of your style, then I would recommend something like a Parkhurst. If you're going cheaper, you know, if you're, if you're very price sensitive, then I like how these look more than Thursday because I think they look a little bit more distinct. I personally like the, they're, they're slightly quirkier in their look. I think the quality control is better than the Thursdays that I used to experience, but in fairness, Thursday now is, you know, they're probably, I, they, I have heard they've upped their quality game. And I like the comfort of these more personally because of how hardcore they went on the synthetic materials. Like if you're gonna do a synthetic, just go all out. Um, but they're way more money. Uh, they do have like a 10% off, I think, for like a first time thing. I think Nick from Stridewise, he just did his review of these, which honestly was a very good video. I would recommend it. Um, he also says he has like a discount code still. So go check out his video, which is like 20% off. Then this brings these down to like 225 or something like that. And if you're down to that price point, like the 25, these for $25 more on Thursdays, absolutely. 100% I would recommend them, no question. But 295 is like, I, that's just to me, it's, I'm sorry, it's an awkward price point. And I feel bad because I actually like these a lot more than I thought I would. Like, one thing I'm learning with trying out all these like cheaper boots that I'm getting for free to do reviews and, and everything on, which obviously I did not pay for these. I, I didn't disclose that earlier, but like, you know me. I don't, I don't need to say that, do I? I'm going, obviously I do need to, but like you shouldn't, you know that, right? But I don't mind it, it's kind of fun because this kind of slightly showed me that there's a way to do synthetics that kind of works in a way. Um, again, I'm not saying they're perfect, I'm not saying you're gonna have the same experience, especially with the with the lack of art support thing. Um, but for me, they're not bad. Um, and the quality is actually pretty good. Like Brazil, whatever Brazilian factory they're using, Makes some pretty good boots, honestly. Maybe some other people should look at that factory instead of some of the other stuff they're using because it's kind of good. My bigger issue is like, they don't say that they're made in Brazil. Like you have to go like search on the website. I think it says it somewhere if I remember correctly, but you gotta really look for it. Kind of annoying. Like, I don't think that's a bad thing any, like it, you're, it looks worse to me that you don't say it like obviously, you know, there's brands that will say like, if it's made in China, it's, they'll be proud of where it's made in China. They'll say that they'll be specific. That's fine, you know? Um, 
in some places in Mexico, like a lot of brands say we're made in Leon, Mexico. Like Leon, Mexico is becoming a destination to make good boots at a fair price. Then, you know, while some of the brands are very, very upfront about that, good, that's cool. You know what I mean? Just be honest about it. They kind of hide it. I don't really know why, because the product is what I think so far is pretty good, um, especially, you know, for a lower price boot. I don't know why you guys gotta be, uh, like, try to be sneaky about it or whatever, <laughs> you know? Um, but yeah, the price point is just the awkward thing for me. Um, I think they should be like, if they were like 225, I would be like, yes, this over Thursday, every single day of the week. And I'm, yeah, Thursday's clearly gotta be their biggest price, their biggest competitor, right? Um, I would definitely be like, yes, this all day long. But at the price, it, it's tough. So anyway, that's the Helm Hollis Boot Antique. Um, in some ways, I'm pleasantly surprised with them. In some ways, I'm like, oh, you guys were like, kind of, I don't really like this, you know? Um, so anyway, uh, if you have any questions, leave them down below. I'm trying to get better at answering my comments more consistently. Uh, but if you have like any immediate questions, DM me on Instagram. That's usually my way of getting back to people quicker. So thank you all very much for watching. I'll see you all next time.